Greetings everybody, I'm Kyle and this is a walkthrough for the text-based horror game Unholy Flesh. And so without further ado, let's get right to it. You awake suddenly. Your head throbs with pain. It appears that you are in some sort of bedchamber. A barred window barely reveals the messy interior. You get up. The thoughts in your head fly aimlessly around and you can't seem to remember what this place is, nor can you recall how you got here. There is an empty backpack on the ground and you put it on your back. You take a look around. You can see a bed, a barred window, a door, and a table. You take a look at the barred window. It looks like it's protected by strong, thick bars. It has a brown brick frame. In some places, the bricks are severely damaged. Clearly, someone had tried to escape. You peer outside. A soft rain is falling in the gloomy afternoon. Nothing interesting catches your eye. You take a look at the table. It is as dark as a color can get. On it, you see a diary page and a box of matches. You take the page and place it in a diary. You take the box of matches and place it in your backpack. You take a look at the bed. Its frame is covered with ancient rust. Your body has left an imprint on the rigid mattress. You take a look under the bed. It's hard to see anything in the gloomy light. However, you can clearly spot two shiny glowing diamonds next to each other. There is something on the other side, a round metal object. It looks like a medallion. You take a look at the pair of diamonds. It seems they are shining. You reach for the diamonds, but it seems they suddenly flash and begin to move backward and disappear under the shadow of the bed. After a moment, you hear a loud hissing sound followed by unnaturally noisy scratching leading upward behind one of the walls. You realize that those weren't diamonds after all. You take a look at the medallion. It appears to be from some sort of light purple metal. It has a small chained dragon carved deep into it. There is a small lock which indicates that it can be opened. You take the medallion and place it in your backpack. You take a look at the door, a wooden old thing, barely standing. It has a wood carved in the center of it. Be warned. You reach for the doorknob and turn it softly and the door opens. It leads to a dimly lit room. You step through the door. You stand on the edge of what looks like a staircase. The light from the bedchamber barely reveals a few steps leading downward. On your left, there is a long metal ladder going high up. On one of the walls, what appears to be a framed map hangs. As you can see from the map, we are currently standing right outside the bedchamber right here, as you can see with the uh, mouse going in a circle. You take the framed map and place it in your backpack. There is a hole where the map once stood. Inside you find a diary page and a fancy monocle. You take the page and place it in a diary. You take a look at the fancy monocle. Surprisingly undamaged, it shines in the gloomy light. A faint liquid blue colored metal box. There is something written on the top left of it, but it is too small to read with a bare eye. You take a peek inside. There are five matches left. You take the fancy monocle and place it on your eye. The world looks crystal clear now. A liquid metal blue colored metal box. The lens of the monocle allows you to read a line of text written on the top left of it. 
Mind the Bible. You take a peek inside. There are five matches left. You take a look around. You can see a metal ladder leading up, a descending staircase, and a door. You start climbing the metal ladder leading up. You reach the top, emerging from a shaft, and the first thing you spot is a giant bell. This place looks like a bell tower. The roof barely stands on three remaining wooden pillars. The wind carries drops of rain onto you. There is a chest on the wet floor. You take a look at the giant bell. It appears to be made out of copper. However, there doesn't seem to be a way to ring it. A small piece of rope hangs from the top. It's too high for your reach, though. You take a look at the small chest. It has steel straps across its lid, holding the wood together. You find a diary page and a torch inside. You take the page and place it in a diary. You take a look at the torch, a piece of stained cloth wrapped around a wooden stick. You judge that it hasn't been lit in quite a while. You take the torch and place it in your backpack. You take a look around. You can see a giant bell, a wooden fence, a small chest, a metal ladder leading down, and a bushy spider. You take a look at the bushy spider. It's covered with greasy fur. His blue, shining eyes seem awfully familiar. You take a look over the wooden fence. It becomes clear that the tower you are standing on belongs to some sort of church. The view allows you to see a vast field covered in green below. It looks like a garden. There is a huge statue in the center of it. You start descending the metal ladder leading down. You are in the dimly lit room. You light a match and stick the front end between the curves of the dry piece of cloth. It catches fire almost immediately. You take a look at the descending staircase. You can barely see the first few steps. There is a sign which says, To the Great Hall. You get the torch out. On the way down, you spot a couple of broken steps and jump over them. You stand in a place covered in ruins. Once this was surely the ceremony room of the church, but now most of the benches are covered in debris. Only the front row of benches is unaffected. A giant gap on the ceiling allows the calm but constant rain to fall freely onto the muddy floor. At the far end of the great hall, there's a door covered in debris. You open the backpack. There is a diary, a box of matches, a medallion, a framed map, and a torch inside. Alright, so as you can see on the map, we are currently located in the great hall that uh, hopefully the mouse is pointing out to you. You take a look around. You can see a row of benches, an altar, a blocked gate, a narrow hallway, and an ascending staircase. You take a look at the blocked gate. It's located on the far end of the wall of the hall. This should be the exit from the church. However, it's blocked with lots of heavy rubble. You go to the altar to get a closer look. It's unusually small for a hall this big. On it a book labeled Holy Bible Lays. A faint liquid blue colored metal box. The lens of the monocle allows you to read a line of text written on the top left of it. Mind the Bible. You take a peek inside. There are four matches left. You start going through the row of benches. It appears that no one has used these for quite a while. Halfway through, a shiny object glistens beneath one of the benches. Upon reaching the end of the row, behind a giant concrete pillar, you see someone. You can't see the person's face because the hood of the robe he is wearing is up. 
He is sitting on a chair behind a table. You take a look at the coin. On the front side, there is a symbol of a broken spear dipped in blood. Its surface is sticky to the touch. You take the coin and place it in your backpack. You take a look at the wooden table. On the table you spot a small clay pot. A sign reads, Every cent goes for a good cause. You take a look at the clay pot. Looking strong enough, it stands still on the shaky table. You peek inside, but the light doesn't get far enough to show the contents. You take a look around. You see a row of benches, a wooden table, an altar, a person in a hooded robe, a blocked gate, a narrow hallway, and an ascending staircase. You take a look at the person in a hooded robe behind the wooden table. He appears to be standing on a chair behind an old wooden table. His hood prevents you from seeing his face. You try communicating with the person in a hooded robe, but only silence greets you back. You toss the coin into the clay pot. It catches on the web inside. You reach to let it free when you hear a loud, creepy laughter. Instantly, your eyes fix on the figure in front of you. Its head goes up, uncovering the face in the hood. However, rather than flesh, a bony skull appears beneath. The thing starts talking with the high-pitched voice of hell itself. Curse you in your filthy money! I will be expecting you in the deepest recesses of hell! With that, the robe collapses to the ground. The thing appears to have taken the pot with it. You take a look around. You can see a row of benches, a table, an altar, a blocked gate, a narrow hallway, an ascending staircase, and a torn robe. You take a look at the torn robe. It lays on the muddy floor. You lift it up and find a pile of rope beneath. You take a look at the pile of rope. It appears to be pretty long, but worn out as well. Tiny threads are hanging all over it. You take the long rope and place it in your backpack. You consider taking the torn rope with you, but then realize that you don't have enough space for it. You pass through the narrow hallway. A magnificent vista stands before you. This place hasn't been disturbed by man for a long time, and <laughs> nature has done its magic. In places, the grass overflows from its natural hue to a faint purple one, giving the whole place both an alien and mysterious feeling. Bright red roses are sticking out between the grass, lighting the garden up. In the center of it all stands a huge statue of an angel, as if taking the role of a guardian. If it wasn't for the rain, a person could have mistaken the place for heaven itself. The only thing which brings you back to reality is a strange, dark hole near the left wall. You peek inside the dark hole. It's just wide enough for someone skinny to go through it. The hole isn't more than half a meter deep. The roughness of which it has been dug suggests that hands were used for the job. On the bottom of it, you can see a big hollow area with the size of a person. A pair of shackles lay at the bottom. There is a lever besides the shackles covered in mud. There is a journal page barely visible in the left corner. You take the page and place it in a journal. There appears to be another diary page under that one. You take the page and place it in a journal. You take a look at the pair of shackles. It appears they were holding something down there. You don't have enough space to carry the pair of shackles. They're too heavy for you anyway. You take a look at the muddy lever. It was obviously snatched by force from somewhere. 
You take the muddy lever and place it in your backpack. You take a look around. You can see an angel statue, a dark hole, a purple grass patch, and a narrow hallway. You take a look at the purple grass patch. Its color strikes you as odd, and you go to have a closer look. At once you spot a pink flower, but after a brief investigation you find out that the grass is actually covering a bunch of bones and a pile of half-rotted flesh. Sick of the sight, you back off and throw up in the nearest bush. You take a look at the bright pink flower. You can't recall seeing anything like it. Its stem branches out and looks more like a bush than a flower, but the bright pink petals and the lack of thorns suggest otherwise. You take the bright pink flower and place it in your backpack. You take a look at the angel statue. It's one of the tallest you can recall seeing. The angel is covering its mouth with its hands. There is a round platform beside the base of the statue. You take a look at the round platform. It seems surprisingly undamaged. On the center, a bell is carved deep into it. You step on the round platform. Although it clearly sinks into the ground, nothing happens. You pass through the narrow hallway. You are in the Great Hall. You get the torch out. On the way up, you spot a couple of broken steps and jump over them. You are in the dimly lit room. You start climbing the metal ladder leading up. You are in the bell tower. You aim for the wide ring below the bell's clapper and throw one end of the long rope. Your hands don't disappoint you and the rope goes in connecting with the mechanism nicely. You pull the rope and it seems that the whole world fills with the sound of the giant bell. You start descending the metal ladder leading down. You are in the dimly lit room. You get the torch out. On the way down you spot a couple of broken steps and jump over them. You are in the great hall. You pass through the narrow hallway. You are in the garden. You step onto the round platform. It sinks into the ground and for a moment you hear nothing but the sound of the giant bell. Then all of a sudden, the ground starts shaking and you nearly lose balance. The quake stops as suddenly as it had begun. The angel statue looks a bit different now. You take a look at the angel statue. It's one of the tallest you can recall seeing. The angel's hands are crossed in front of its chest. It has a broad smile across its face, revealing at least a dozen sharpened teeth. The back of the statue is now gone, but rather than solid granite, the inside shows a cabin of an elevator. You take a look at the elevator, a small cabin enclosed by a glass door. The door shows nail scratches going from top to bottom. You get in the cabin of the elevator and click the only button. The cabin starts moving down and not before long it comes to a stop. You appear to be in some sort of office beneath the ground. A small bulb still sheds light in this godforsaken place. Just in front of you, a metal desk is fixed to the ground. An open safe is chained to the desk. On your left, a corridor stretches long, and its end fades into the darkness. On your right, a barred door blocks your way. You open the backpack. There is a diary, a box of matches, a medallion, a framed map, a torch, a journal, a muddy lever, and a bright pink flower inside. You take a look around. You can see a barred door, a long corridor, a metal desk, an open safe, a notice board, a small hole, 
a window, and an elevator. You take a look at the bar door. It's locked and you can't find a way to get it open. Beyond, you see an empty room which appears to be a prison cell. You take a look at the metal desk. It stands on four strong legs. On it, a journal page is almost completely covered in dust. You take the page and place it in a journal. You take a look at the open safe. A giant hole stands in place of the lock. The safe is empty, but there is a small hole revealing a secret compartment. The only thing left inside is an old sheet of paper. You take the sheet of paper and place it in your backpack. You take a look at the notice board. The brown surface below is barely visible from all the blood stains all over it. There is a single journal page sticked with a pin. It starts day 45. You take the page and place it in a journal. You take a look through the window. As expected below the ground you see lots of dirt and mud. On the bottom right there is some sort of white globe. Taking a closer look you discover that this is the left eye of a skull. While staring with revulsion, a sluggish worm goes out from the eye and disappears further into the dirt and mud. You take a look at the small hole. It appears that this is part of a mechanism. A piece of the puzzle is missing, though. You stick the muddy lever deep into the hole, which produces a loud, satisfying click. It appears to fit perfectly. You pull the lever, and a loud scream follows somewhere behind. You turn around, but see nothing. At this point, you are not sure if this is real, or your mind is playing tricks on you. You take a look at the long corridor. It seems to lead to darkness. A little bit further in, you can see an enormous bloodstain on the floor. You pass through the long corridor without any difficulty and emerge into the other side. The whole room is filled with an unimaginable stench. Nevertheless, you decide that it's a good idea to investigate this place. Just in front of you, there is a pair of tables which holds a huge pile of bodies. On your left, a coffin lays on the cold floor. Above it, painted in white, a cabinet hangs on the wall. On your right, there is a table separated from the others. This whole place looks like a small lab. You take a look at the pair of tables. They seem to be connected together to form a much bigger one. On it, a pile of bodies are stacked high on top of one another. You see no reason to disturb them. You reach for the coffin's lid and slide it open. A mummified body, pierced with spikes, lays inside. You can feel shivers going through your whole body. The fear of the thing actually rising and stabbing you to death makes you slide the lid closed again. You take a look at the white cabinet. It has a door blocking you from its contents. You open the door of the white cabinet. There is a vial of chemical X, a vial of chemical Y, and a vial of chemical Z inside. A hand drill is located in the corner. You take a look at the vial of chemical X, a thick, sluggish, dark blue liquid. You take the vial of chemical X and place it in your backpack. You take a look at the vial of Chemical Y, a light blue liquid. It reminds you of water. You take the vial of Chemical Y and place it in your backpack. 
You take a look at the vial of Chemical Z. It contains an orange powder substance. You take the vial of Chemical Z and place it in your backpack. You take a look at the hand drill. The whole thing is covered with dried blood. Its end is severely dull from all the usage. You take the hand drill and place it in your backpack. You take a look at the operation table. On it lays a thing which once could be identified as a body of a person that had dissolved to the giant pile of liquefying flesh that stands before you. Most of the bones are clearly visible, but the head of the thing seems surprisingly intact. There is a metal bowl next to it. You take a look at the metal bowl. It's made from the strong stainless steel. It's empty. You take the metal bowl and place it in your backpack. You take a look at the melting body, a thing which once could be identified as such, that had dissolved to the giant pile of liquefying flesh which stands before you. Most of the bones are clearly visible, but the head of the thing seems surprisingly intact. Besides the thing, lays a journal page, half covered in blood. You take the page and place it in a journal. You take a look around. You can see a pair of tables, a dusty coffin, a white cabinet, an operation table, and a long corridor. You place the hand drill on the head and push it down while rotating. The sound which accompanies this procedure is unspeakably vile. But you manage to bear it for a few more moments. After removing the hand drill, a yellow substance begins leaking from the hole. On the table next to you, there is an empty vial, which you fill with the substance and place in your backpack. You take a look at the vial of brain substance. It's yellow, and it looks like a jelly. You open the backpack. There is a diary, a box of matches, a medallion, a framed map, a torch, a journal, a bright pink flower, a sheet of paper, a vial of chemical X, a vial of chemical Y, a vial of chemical Z, a hand drill, a metal bowl, and a vial of brain substance inside. You place the brain substance in the metal bowl. You place the chemical X in the metal bowl. You place the chemical Z in the metal bowl. You place the handful of petals in the metal bowl. The mixture starts bubbling, and in a matter of seconds, a light purple liquid forms inside. You pour it into one of the empty vials and place it in your backpack. You take a look at the vial of purple liquid. It's bubbling intensively. You pass through the long corridor without any difficulty and emerge into the other side. You are in the office. You take a look around. You can see a barred door, a long corridor, a metal desk, an open safe, a notice board, a lever in a hole, a window, and an elevator. You take a look at the barred door. It's locked and you can't find a way to get it open. Beyond, you see an empty room which appears to be a prison cell. You pour the purple liquid into your mouth and swallow greedily. The taste reminds you of raspberries and you finish up the vial in a matter of seconds. A strong ache in your stomach forces you to bend forward and crash onto the ground. You try to resist it, but the pain overcomes your desire to stay conscious and you faint. You open your eyes after some time and discover that the pain is gone and you feel fine. In fact, 
You feel excellent. There is something else as well. You've gone exceptionally stronger. No door should stand in your way now. You grab the bars and feel the blood rising in your veins. The bars stand no chance as you pull them apart and open a suitable hole for you to pass through. You pass through the hole in the barred door with a hole, a painfully dull and empty room. Once it was painted all in white, but the walls had lost their color long ago. Taking a closer look, there appears to be a bump on one of the walls. You take a look around. You see a loose brick and a barred door with a hole. You take a look at the loose brick. There might be something behind, forcing it to stick out. You feel that you can take it. You remove the loose brick. Inside you find a small key and place it in your backpack. There is a diary page in one corner of the hole. You take a look at the small key. A rust has begun to creep through it. It looks too small to fit a door lock. You reckon it's made for something smaller. You take a look at the medallion. It appears to be from some sort of light purple metal. It has a small chained dragon carved deep into it. There is a small lock, which indicates that it can be opened. You stick the key into the medallion's hole and turn it. After a soft click, the medallion pops open and inside you can see a small vial of light orange liquid. Label identifies it as Antidote. You are not sure what it actually negates, but place it in your backpack anyway. You take a look at the vial of Antidote, a light orange liquid label identifies it as antidote. You take the page and place it in a diary. You find another diary page beneath that one. You take the page and place it in a diary. You pass through the hole in the barred door with the hole. You are in the office. You get in the cabin of the elevator and click the only button. The cabin starts moving up, and not before long it comes to a stop. You are in the garden. You pass through the narrow hallway. You are in the Great Hall. You take a look at the blocked gate. It's located on the far end wall of the hall. This should be the exit from the church. However, it's blocked with lots of heavy rubble. It doesn't take much time to clear out the rubble. When you do, the gate opens easily and reveals a path which leads out of the church. A diary page lays in front of the opened gate. You take the page and place it in a diary. You open the backpack. There is a diary, a box of matches, a medallion, a framed map, a torch, a journal, a sheet of paper, a vial of chemical Y, a hand drill, a metal bowl, a small key, and a vial of antidote inside. Day 32. It's not going well. In fact, I am not making any progress with these rats that they are giving me. I need real test subjects, real people. Rick is going to the village for some. Jimmy wouldn't understand. No one would. Only a true child of science can comprehend what I am about to bring to this world. And no, it's not to end the damn war. I don't care if I become a slave to one nation or another, but my brother does not deserve this. I am pushing the boundaries of science for him. I know that mission was doomed from the start, but the captain insisted they should be sacrificed for the greater good. That same night, I return the favor by smashing his skull against the ground. Day 34. That's it! I'm sick of testing guinea pigs. That thief from the hall surprised us all. How did the bastard dare attack Jimmy? I can't believe it. The helpless cripple. And for what, a few coins? 
Never mind, he got what he deserved. His body was perfect for experiments. I got around a gallon of blood out of him, which I used to feed my rats. <laughs> they love that stuff. I used to do it myself when I wanted them super active, but there is so much that my body can produce. And on the same night the results came, prototype. I am starting the treatment tomorrow. Day 45. It's not working. Damn it, I tried everything. There's something missing. But what? What? My head. I don't get it. One thing I do get. More experiments need to be done. I need to save my brother. More people. Tomorrow. The service! Yes, perfect. I'll send the guards to get them. But he cannot know. He must not know. He will not know. Or all would have been for nothing. I'll take care of this personally. He mustn't leave his room for his own good. I'm doing the right thing here. I must be. I want to save his life. To give him a chance. Day 49. Yes! 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 I did it! I finally did it! After so many sleepless nights. After so many failures. It's done! Yet, so many deaths, so much blood. It was worth it, though. Oh, yes it was. For my little brother. For him. For Jimmy. He will be saved! Oh, yes. Every single brain removed. Every single eyelid slashed. I can still remember the last scream of Rick as I ripped his lungs out with my saw. Oh, what a beautiful sight it was. And it's done now. Finally finished. I can't believe I didn't do it earlier. It seems so obvious now. Only one ingredient has evaded me. Day 50. It was the flower, that pretty little thing. Some call it blood rain. Not for the color, though. Absolutely not. It's bright purple, and not the fancy one. The dark, evil one. Blood rain comes from the place where it grows. To flourish, it has to feed on blood. That's why it evaded me for so long. There was one thing left. Adding Rick's brain to the mixture of my favorite chemicals, X and Z. And voila! It was done. The cure was complete. It can be fatal, though. Oh, yes, it can. But I made an antidote. For my brain is ticking. Tick. 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 I can hear it loud and clear. It speaks to me. Tick. 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 <laughs> It was time for the afternoon service, and I was going down the staircase, lost in my own thoughts, when I almost fell through that hole in the steps again. Although I didn't get hurt, one of my crutches got stuck and it took me ages to get it out. I told John to fix that damn step a million times already, but he seems to be preoccupied with something as of late and refuses to tell me what. I hate it when he does that. Never mind, I got carried away again. The steps took me some time, but I managed to get down in time for the service. However, things didn't go as expected. I was standing in the middle of a crime scene. Being a cripple didn't mean that I was completely useless, though. There in the center of the Great Hall, a bearded man was trying to steal something from an old lady. A thought came to me then. Life wouldn't give you a better chance to become a hero. I leapt forward as fast as my crutches would let me, which sadly wasn't enough. The thief spotted me easily and knocked me out with a single blow. Not until later did I find out that this very blow gave the old lady an opportunity to crash her purse into the thief's head and crack it open. I got up eventually and although I told John that I was fine, he insisted on checking my head for further damage. 
Greta stayed with us for quite a while and I got to know her better. She told me of rumors about people disappearing from the town, but my brother discarded that as nonsense. After the examination was over, I asked what was going to happen to the body of the thief, and John said he would take care of it, whatever that meant. Later that night, I went on the bell tower to seek a break from all the action, when I saw something. What have I done? Oh no, this shouldn't have happened. I killed them. I fucking killed them all. I remember being so angry with him, with John. I'm not sure if I can even call him my brother now. After I saw what he had done, how many lives he had taken. And this is beyond forgiveness. It doesn't matter anyway. He rests with the others now. And all because of his ambition and my foolishness. It all started after waiting for nearly a week in the bedchamber, counting the days as they rolled over, when he finally came and dragged me to his lab, for he knew that I wouldn't go on my own. As soon as we went below the ground, I felt the hair rising all over my body. There was something wrong with this place. I started screaming and struggling to break free from his incredibly firm grip. He didn't mind it, though. It even seemed that he enjoyed it. After chaining me to a table, he placed a small key in my pocket and spoke of an antidote for something. His speech was senseless. I hardly understood anything of it. I didn't care anyway. My thoughts were only of escape from this place. That was when he poured some sort of liquid in my mouth, and in a matter of seconds, I fainted. I remember that we fought. I was incredibly strong. My legs were perfectly fine, and there was a lot of hatred for the figure standing in front of me. During the fight, all sorts of vials went crashing onto the ground. The last thing I remember after waking up in the office cell, a huge gas explosion. I guess that the thing which fixed my legs helped me survive this. After I woke up, there were military men all over the place, burying the dead in the garden. One of the bodies was John's. I watched them finish their dirty work from the shadows of the prison and now I am doing something that I should have done long ago, leaving this damned place once and for all, with only death and destruction left behind. Top Secret Project SISSD Supplement to Increase Soldiers' Strength and Durability The government has decided for this church to be rebuilt and resume its daily routine as a cover-up for a new research facility. Dr. Jonathan Carter is to lead the research and be provided any supplies for his work. He is to use any means necessary to accomplish his goal. A squad of soldiers will be assigned for him to command. His working place is a newly equipped laboratory, which will be protected by a safety mechanism to deny unauthorized access. A lever has to be connected for safe passing. In case of danger, the lever should be pulled out. You drink the small amount of the liquid, but it doesn't seem to affect you in any way. You step through the door and fade into the shadows of the village, and you know that even when you leave this horrifying place, your guilt will always stand beside you. The End Wow, what a game. Alright everybody, that's going to be do it for this walkthrough of Unholy Flesh. If you found this walkthrough to be useful to you, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment if you wouldn't mind. And feel free to share this walkthrough with those who you think will benefit most from it. And if you find any other text-based games that you would like a walkthrough done for, and preferably if you would like them narrated, if, if they don't come narrated, then uh, please leave a comment uh, asking as such, and have fun.